The legal marijuana industry now supports more than 440,000 full-time jobs, up 5% from last year, report fines. The number of full-time marijuana jobs in the U.S. rose by nearly 5% during the past year, according to the latest annual industry report on employment in the cannabis sector. That's a turnaround from the roughly 2% decline between 2022 and 2023, but otherwise it marks the slowest year-over-year -year growth going back to 2017. All told, legal cannabis in the nation supports more than 444,000 full-time equivalent jobs, says a new report from Colorado-based marijuana staffing company Vangst. Despite the overall rise in cannabis-related jobs, the report notes that the year's job growth wasn't evenly spread across the country. Now more than ever, it says America's cannabis industry is a state-by-state, region-by-region job market. In Michigan, for example, where marijuana sales have surged in the past few years, the industry saw growth of more than 11,000 jobs, the report found, a 39% growth from the year earlier. Missouri's full-time job since the state's launched its adult use market, meanwhile, added another 10,735 jobs. Other states saw job growth, including New Jersey, Maryland, Connecticut, New York, New Mexico, Rhode Island, and Utah. In more established state cannabis markets, however, trends point in the other direction. Colorado and Washington, the first two U.S. states to legalize marijuana and open retail stores to adults, saw 16 and 15 percent job losses, respectively. The California's massive marijuana market, for its part, supports 78,618 jobs as of March 2024. But that's down 6% from the year earlier. A countervailing pushback in mature markets in the American West, California, Colorado, Washington, Oregon, and Nevada resulted in the loss of roughly 15,000 jobs in that region. Also noting that Oklahoma, Nevada, Massachusetts, and Arizona recorded losses. Authors of the Vanks report attributed the shrinkage to a variety of factors, including an oversupply of cannabis and a dip in marijuana-related tourism. The expansion of adult use sales to 20 states, the report noted, for example, has reduced can Colorado's can of tourism to a fraction of its former self. The experience of buying legal weed in a retail store may have lost some of its novelty, unless, of course, you couple it with a divorce. <laughs> The report notes pointing out Las Vegas and its annual 40 million visitors. Nevada's 2023 annual revenue came up to came up 50 million short of the 880 million mark set in 2022, and roughly a thousand jobs uh, were eliminated. The industry report is nevertheless optimistic, projecting a turnaround in the next couple of years. We expect losses in these markets to continue to thin out in 2024 and to turn positive again in 2025. While the report while the report does not project job numbers into the future and includes a forecast of nationwide cannabis revenue looking ahead to 2035, at which point it expects the U.S. market will be in the $87 billion range. That's more than triple the $28.8 billion of revenue the industry made in 2023, according to Vangst. In addition to job numbers, the new report also touches on what various positions within the cannabis industry are paid. Trimming marijuana, for example, pays between 14 and 27 an hour, while the director of cultivation makes between 90 and 140. On the retail, that's 90 to $140,000 annually, not per hour. On the retail side, typical bud tenders make between 14 and 22, while retail directors make between 80 to $120,000 per year. Together, retail and cultivation categories make up more than half, 54% of all marijuana industry jobs. Carson Humston, Bank's founder and CEO, noted in press release that the company's tracking marijuana jobs per state is something that the federal government does not do for our industry. While the federal government does not track cannabis job numbers, the U.S. Census Bureau last year began collecting data on marijuana business activity as well as state cannabis tax revenue. Last September, before launching the interactive map, the agency published a report showing that legal cannabis states had collected more than $5.7 billion in marijuana tax revenue over an 18-month period. It also recently updated its survey of private businesses to better capture marijuana-related economic activity. This is the second year that Banks has produced the Cannabis Jobs Report. Previously, it had been commissioned by the marijuana advertising platform Leafly. It's the product of blah, 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 State revenue varies from jurisdiction to jurisdiction. Let me sort of wrap this up in the interest of time. TD Cullen projected late last year that legal cannabis sales will reach $37 billion in 2027, up from what it said was $29 billion in 2023. At least some of that growth is expected to come from increased substitution of cannabis for alcohol. Pay attention. 
particularly among younger adults. One aspect of the cannabis job market that Vank's report does not touch on is the possible impact of unionization in the industry. A push by workers in Missouri, for example, has raised a legal question of whether or not marijuana trimmers and others are considered agricultural workers or whether they have and whether they have the right to organize. This is Yaro Kubrin, High at Nine News, Thursday morning. I'd like to hear what the rest of you think. Man, I mean, I mean, this is this is just like a bunch of stats and statistics. I mean, just showing that that cannabis has positive effects for for business and the overall economy, and more municipalities should embrace it because cannabis is a jobs creator overall. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I I think a couple things. Unless Dale and Stone are going to jump in on this. Well, I, 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 I go ahead. I just want to say that the companies I represent, the um, t bud tenders, the delivery drivers, the trimmers, things like that, they tend to be in the same pay category as people who flip burgers at McDonald's. Mm -hmm. okay. So you're adding jobs, but those jobs are not, you know, top tier jobs. So there's there's opportunities that are at that caliber, and you know, in California. Uh, the labor laws will kill you. So it's it's a real difficult situation here in California. They, the industry does not afford them the money right now to pay what they might want to pay. But the downside of being an employer in California is that if you mess up even one little thing with our labor laws, you're in, you're in big trouble. Yep. So I, I'm encouraged that finally some of those numbers, I mean, we used to get all these numbers in the start out, oh, they're gonna make billions of dollars in taxes every yeah. year, you know, and they overtax and overregulated and the damn industry damn near died. But it's nice to see that you can actually point to some numbers at a city or a county or even the state can go to and, and say, this, this is the kind of benefits we're gonna see. Yep. Uh, I'd also like to see them track how much you decrease the resources spent on law enforcement as you bring legal into the picture here, because that's another side of this, that it's an economic boon if you can capture those dollars that used to be spent for eradicating marijuana. Mm -hmm. But otherwise, this is, you know, I don't know if it's good or bad news, it's news. Yes. yes. So I think that Dale touched on a very important applied economics concept. Mm -hmm as we decrease the cost for law enforcement and prohibition on uh, and 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 these actions against uh, cannabis operators or uh, states where there was no legal uh, cannabis programs that's a massive uh, economic benefit it is true that a lot of those trimmer bud tender jobs are entry level maybe not even sustainable wages in certain markets I think that if we have less taxes, there's room for some of those positions to have profit share, 401k, additional benefits, health insurance. And I also think that we need to fundamentally ask regulators and government and policymakers to revisit their tax structure and to say, where would you rather realize the economic gains? Would you rather tax the industry and then have control over how that money is disseminated sometimes to other interest groups? Or would you rather see job creation and job creation with more sustainable wages and where those employees can have opportunities to participate either in you know fractional ownership, cooperatives, various other perks? And so my hope would be that policymakers and industry are able to come together and realize that job creation is far better than taxing the industry and that sustainable jobs for those line staff and that 54% that are trimmers and bud tenders isn't going to be able to be achieved until we have substantial tax reform. Mm. 